Here's my prediction on the Ruger American pistol. As of the post date of this video, when I'm putting it online, no one else has said this. Sometimes people come to TMP videos, hear what I'm saying, they'll regurgitate it in their own YouTube videos, or in print media, or in blogs. But as of now, no one said this. Not that I've seen. You ready? My prediction on the Ruger American pistol is that overall, over long term, it will flop. It will be a modest, lukewarm success, if that, for Ruger. Yes, I could be totally wrong. And if I am, I will admit it. I'll just say I was wrong about the Ruger American pistol. I mean, it took off. I don't think I am. I really don't. And do you, do you know why I'm saying that? Why I'm saying that it will not be a runaway success for Ruger? Nope, not reliability. Nope, not accuracy. Mm, pretty much nope on ergonomics. There are some weird things we're going to talk about. And I'll cover all the features of it. I mean, we, we are going to do a thorough tabletop review. And there are a lot of good things about the Ruger American Pistol. I'm going to be honest in this review. But the reason I'm saying that is aesthetics. The way it looks. I think it's ugly. Uniquely American, uniquely ugly. <laughs> I, I, it does not connect with me. Uh, Tactical Doodle look, said it looked like an updated high point. Hey, we kind of like high points in the project. Yeah, they're ugly, but dang, are they cheap. And this one isn't that, that expensive. It's actually pretty affordable. We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about value and what it constitutes. Let me ask you this, to back up this logic, do you think you're going to see movies, television shows, video games feature the Ruger American Pistol in the years to come? Again, I could be wrong, but I say no. I, I don't see it. Hey, let's, let's give our main character a Ruger American Pistol. Again, maybe it happens. I'll say, hey, I was wrong about that. Uh, and the way I, I look at that is if I'm a movie producer, would I put this gun in my character's hands? Uh, how do I put this gently? Hell no, I would not. Now, this is all about second cool. How a gun presents, how it looks. And no, it's not ghastly. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that the Ruger American, oh, it's so ugly. But I'm not saying it's gorgeous either. I mean, what guns do we most often see in movies? The ones that are seen over and over and over and over and over again. That's right. Glocks. Why is that? Because they look cool. They look futuristic still after decades glocks look futuristic you'll see h and k's h and k's look good on screen you'll see sigs on screen frequently here comes a mark 25 this thing is badass it looks badass it is serious that looks like a military serious piece of weaponry you see a lot of movies especially when dealing with the military running SIGs, Glocks, and there's others. I'm just throwing a couple out there. I don't want this video to be an hour long. I don't think you're going to see a Ruger American. I think it's going to flatline. How many high points have you seen in movies? I rest my case. It's kind of like, it's, no, I mean, high point's different. I'm not saying it's a high point, but we're talking about aesthetics, and I think that is, is very, very important when it comes to gun sales. Here's why. I do knife reviews, right? What do I always talk about knife reviews? aesthetics I do go look them up in my playlist tactical folders fixed blade knives I've said it many times that a knife has to look cool and connect to the dude online if he's shopping online or in person that they're looking across the competitive options and they go oh I like that one are they going to do that with a Ruger American pistol I, I don't think so now that's not to say it won't connect to some maybe someone's looking for a high value pistol they're steered that way by the clerk. It has some real upsides. I'm going to talk about them. We're just talking about aesthetics. And that alone, I think, may sink the Ruger American. There you go. TMP opinion. That's all it is. Take a deep breath. Relax. World continues to spin if you have a Ruger American. This, by the way, is number 8605. I did a preliminary booth review on the Ruger American pistol and the funny thing is everything I said about that pistol pretty much was borne out in testing ergonomics accuracy and reliability I, I really wasn't surprised at all it was almost exactly what I thought it'd be I was like okay 
you know, this, that, yeah. Now Ruger will say LE was consulted, they integrated a bunch of different features like uh, recoil absorp absorption, um, low, they say low bore axis, we'll talk about that. Uh, it does come in 45 ACP as of the making of this video, this is a 9mm version which will probably outsell a lot when it does sell the 45 ACP. This is a pro model, has no external safety. There is, if your jurisdiction requires it, a certain external safety version model uh, if you're interested. The 45 ACP, by the way, is the 8615 is the one. It is made in the USA, so that's good. Maybe. Maybe you don't like USA pistols. Maybe the mystique of, of uh, your combat go-to-war handgun is that it's German-made or Austrian-made. Maybe dig that. I don't know if that holds mystique for me. Like, okay, this is made in Austria. It's so cool. I'm not that way. I just look at first cool. It doesn't work. Uh, stuff I'm going to talk about. And then after I start following, do I like do I like the way it works? Or I'm sorry, looks. SAWC Design and Ergos. Here's another kind of a a brick tied around the neck of the Ruger American. And I it just and I said this in the preliminary review. I never understood it. And I did click around, watch some other people's videos prior to this, and no one else has mentioned it. Or if they do, they're glossing over it like it's not a big deal. This gun weighs 31 ounces. So here we have a new design, fresh from scratch, polymer frame handgun competing with a very competitive polymer frame striker fired handgun crowd. Very proven Glock, Walther PPQ, Canic TP9 series. The list goes on and on, and they decide to make it 31 ounces. That, to me, even if it was a good-looking pistol, is a de deal killer. Here's another deal killer. It's thick. Now, I measure this about 34 millimeters wide. I measure the Glock, and this could be, you know, some people are saying 36 millimeters, but on my scale, it's 34 millimeters. On the Glock, and I'm talking overall width, not just a slide, let me put it this way, 28 millimeters. And what do I always say about width? It is very, very important. Very important. That's carryability if you go inside the waistband. Uh, the width, it's just a big chunk. The Ruger American pistol reminds me of the P89 and the P90 series. It really does. It feels the same way. It feels clunky in the hand. Um, now, when those guns came out, way back when, the P89 for example, there wasn't a ton of competition. Yes, Sig was out, yeah, Glock was out, but here comes a reliable, albeit bulky, albeit heavy, Ruger pistol. It did connect, it did find a following, but look at the competition back then. That's a good pistol, but there's no way I ever bought one. For same reasons, it did not connect with me aesthetically, and also in terms of SAWC. Those two things really, for me, with this pistol, go hand in hand. SAWC, 31 ounces, thick, and then to me, it's not visually appealing. And I'm not backing off from that. that you're, you know, you dial in for my opinion, that's how I feel. I just, this is not a gun I would buy on those two instances alone. I, there's no way. I don't care what the price is, I would not do it. Now, when they consulted with uh, law enforcement, Ruger goes um, on about how you know, the barrel camming reduces felt recoil. It spreads the impulse out. Uh, I will say shooting the Ruger American pistol is mostly pleasant. It shoots well, but it should. It's uh, 31 ounces. <laughs> Any gun that's 31 ounces, 32 ounces, uh, should shoot well. And, and speaking of 32 ounces, it's the same damn weight as a 226. Now, this is a Mark 25. It's like an ounce heavier or something. It's got threaded barrel. But the gun is the same weight as a P226. Who else is saying that? Nobody. I clicked around. No one's saying that. Oh, it's nice. You know, it's a little bit heavy, but it really helps tame the recoil. I don't want to be carrying it around. I'd rather carry around a SIG. I don't care how much it costs. I'll pay. There's smart money and dumb money in life, man. Amp it up. Get a pistol you just love and it turns you on. I Sometimes I shake my head at the value pistol whole thing. Ah, oh, we really got to save 50 bucks on a pistol. 100 bucks. Well, you have it the rest of your life. What's it matter? It's a, you know, go to war defense item. Speaking of which, philosophy of use is standard. Questions? Yeah, I would say this though. Philosophy of use kind of like the Canic, kind of like the Walther. 
uh, is a Glock alternative because you know when something's super popular a lot of people use it There's always going to be pushback. They're like, well, I don't want that. I don't want a Glock. I want something different. Okay, go get a Ruger American pistol, dude You can shoot lead out of it Does have I guess I'll start front. It's got an M1913 rail. I wish the trigger guard were squared off It's slanted could skateboard tape it up. That's cool undercut on the frame It does have a steel trigger. I really like that um, and let's check the trigger out while we're here. No magazine disconnect. That's good. I thought the trigger was pretty good. I think they brag a lot about the reset. Here's your reset on it. And let me insert the discussion like I always do on reset. Guys that talk about reset, dude, just stop. The only times I, I want to hear a discussion about reset is from a competitor. USPA guy. IDPA guy. I'll listen to reset about him because it does make a difference to them. Everybody else who acts like they shoot to reset are, is full of crap. I shoot with guys all the time. They don't. They're coming all the way forward, all the way back. Oh, I shoot to reset. Yeah, and you can't hit anything either. Rant complete. So here's your reset on here. Okay. Not bad. It's not bad. You know. Uh, eight pounds. Uh, six pounds is what Ruger's saying. Where's my trigger scale? I have it here somewhere. A lot of work going on here tonight. A lot of work. Uh, they say it's a pre-tension striker, not a partial cock. Um, no pun intended. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's supposed to give a, a nice pull. And I would say the pull is nice. I'm trying to be totally fair here. So there you go, six pounds, two ounces. So Ruger's right on with that. Nice job. Uh, let's see what the Glock. Since it's just here, we'll just pull it. I think this one does have a three and a half pound connect connector in it, by way of disclosure. Goes three and a half pound. Five six. There you go. Well, since we're here, which one would you prefer? Nothing fancy. Uh, Glock all day long. What? I, if you're asking, I'm telling you. That's I would. I just prefer the Glock one. Um, magazine release is fully ambidextrous. That's cool. Already installed, and it's low profile. Your slide release is ambidextrous, and it doesn't really get in the way. Unlike some other designs we've seen, kind of like CZ. I thought sometimes CZs and FNs, ambi controls, kind of add a lot of width to it. At least in years past, that's the way it's worked. Um, they do have some really big slide rails in it. I guess we can take it down super quick. Speaking of which, the takedown on this is super simple. Mag out, all the standard stuff, chamber empty. You don't have to pull the trigger. Just take down lever and the slide will come right off. Really nice takedown, big plus on that. And big slide rails, 1.5 inch slide rails, so not like hardened inserted steel inserts, like a Glock into the polymer frame. There's a look inside and the recoil assembly is very Glock-like, flat wound. Um, spring. I love the takedown on it. That's really nice. It's one of the better takedowns I've seen in a long time. There's no games. It's so super quick. Love that there's no magazine safety. Uh, it is. You may have seen inside there. There is a chassis. So you could, and they may come out with them in the future to make this thing better looking, perhaps. <laughs> um, interchange uh, frames on it, and so the chassis on the inside. You can take it out, maybe put a different frame on it, like you would a P250 or a P320. Talked about the steel trigger. It's glass field nylon, just like the SR9 was. There are interchangeable back straps in the box, which is right here. Again, get this one. By the way, this is serial number uh, 86009400. And thanks to the above for letting me review it. So glad you did. There's your back straps right there. I never put those on. I always just run the standard back strap. I think most people do. I think it's more of a sales gimmick. I never meet people who've exchanged the back straps. I always put the big one on. It's like, whoa, that's huge. Put the small one on, just like Goldilocks. I'm like, that's way too small. <laughs> that's just me, dude. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. Uh, I talked about the width already. It is a showstopper for me personally, as it was on the P89, P90. Just saying. Lanyard loop right there. Look on here. I think the the molding on the nylon frame is okay. I really like the front strap. It's good here. Talked about the undercutting. That's good. It's okay back here. But I'll say this. 
I don't have a Gen 4 Glock, so I have to use this Gen 3. This has decal grip on it, so it's really not a fair representation. Against a Gen 3, I, I, I would say the Gen 3 is a little bit better. How about the TP9? Okay, I'll roll in a non-Glock. Um, about the same. About the same grip, I would say. This one's hot. It's coming out of a current and used defensive system in the family. We'll talk about TP9 again, trust me. Um, there are some complaints ergonomically about this rear shelf here. Uh, I did not personally experience that. How's that for fair? So in shooting it, I never said, oh, this is hitting me in the thumb, knuckle. I didn't see that at all. And I say, if it's hurting you, you probably have a dicked up grip on the pistol. Try changing your grip. I didn't notice it at all. That being said, I think, again, aesthetically, it's goofy. It doesn't look good. And... And they talk about the low bore axis on this gun, and oh man, it's so low, it's so easy. I kind of feel like when I'm shooting a Ruger American, I'm shooting an XDM. And, and that is to say, I love the XDM, but it, I've never thought of the XDM as having a, a low bore axis. And just the opposite, I think it's a high bore axis. That's, that's the way I feel. And I feel the same way about the Ruger American. I think it has normal amount of muzzle flip. I didn't think it was substantially less than anything else. Uh, slide serrations, not in the front, in the back. They have a certain milling pattern on there. Steel Novak sights. I love the sights on it. They're good. They were well regulated. We'll look at accuracy here in just a second. Forgot to mention on the trigger, I did say it's steel, but there is a molded in overstop on there. A lot of guys are talking about that, how they hate it. Um, a lot of guys are saying that you got to go really far forward on it to fire off the Ruger American if you think. Honestly, for me shooting, I wasn't thinking about that at all. I, I thought the shooting dynamics of the pistol were actually pretty good. How's that for fair? I thought I didn't say, oh man, I gotta go really far forward on the trigger. I don't really notice it. I don't think it, I don't think most guys would either. I think it's mo more than anything an online discussion. Um, so guys are saying, well I gotta take up the slack as, uh, again, I gotta ride the reset. Uh, unlike a Glock, so you know, the Glock, you know, we pull it, reset, and you just, right there. I mean, if you're really shooting a reset, you don't have to come forward again like you would on the Ruger American. That's the discussion. I'm just representing it. Uh, there's investment cast and MIM parts in there. I don't care. Ruger does all their metallurgy. So excellent. It just doesn't matter. This is plus P rated, and Ruger will talk about how durable the pistol is. I have no doubt about that at all. And I think that's most everything we talked about. Uh, that we need to talk about. And that takes the firepower. I really like the nickel Teflon coated magazine. 17 rounder. There's a big retention slot here. Unlike an FN. Which has a little tiny uh, nubs. On some of the FN pistols do. Which I don't like. So excellent magazine. I don't say it's any better than a lot of others. I mean XDM is the same. XDM um, from Springfield. Same way. FN magazines on some of their pistols. Same quality levels is what I'm talking about. So firepower is on par with other options. Uh, Ruger has talked about they've put the Ruger American pistol through 25,000 rounds of torture test. I say that's great. All manufacturers, like I said in a recent review, need to do that. I really don't doubt that it performed well from my testing. Um, however, just remember, Chuck Taylor has, what, over 300,000 rounds for his G17. Um, Hey, you can't compare it against uh, Glock. Why? It's interesting. We're talking about track record. We're talking about reliability. Pretty much the same price point. Why not? Why not? And polymer pistol. Again, 25 ounces, 31 ounces. Did we go back into a time machine? Back to 1989 with this thing? Let me say this. If this thing was like the same weight as the Ruger, the same width as the Ruger, and it still looked the same way, this would be a different tabletop review. I would still bust on it for looks. I still think it looks dumb. Well, to a certain level. But it's a different review. I was like, hey man, I don't know. Maybe then, since it feels so good in hand, that's what she said, and it shoots so well that I warm up to it more. Every gun's its own creature, man. Uh, our track record was good. I'm trying to think if there was a stoppage. If there is, I'll show it to you in video, but I don't remember it. And I... Dang it, I had my GoPro running, I had dual cameras running, I think that GoPro dumped. So you may just have to look at my hands a lot. I don't know how much shooting footage I have of it because I lost a whole SD card. That's pretty much how it goes. Here's the, here's the accuracy, which I will term as excellent. This is eight yards standing, I'm gonna go fast. 
American Eagle. Boom, boom, boom. Awesome. Look at this, dude. This is standing, and what's the range on this? Eight yards still. Look at that. That is really good accuracy. I'll classify the accuracy as, I mean, that's the group that kind of got away. It's phenomenal. It's really good. Golden Saber pointing in one, or shooting into one hole. Granted, that's just five yards. Remington Gold Saber here. Fioki, JHP, good. These are rapid doubles. I'll show you the footage somewhere along the way. And basically, one hole if you have a really good shooter at seven yards. Accuracy is really, really good. Again, I like this. Uh, three dot steel Novak sights. I think it represents a lot of value, especially at the price point the Ruger Americans coming in at. Field strip, we just did it. Super simple accessories. Um, well, it's its own creature. You know, I'm still predicting that it's not going to be a, a, a runaway bestseller for Ruger, which means you're not going to have a runaway huge list of accessories. You're not going to have a ton of holsters specific built for it. I mean, Ruger probably lists some on their their website. Um, and as Ruger usually does, they come out with a plain Jane version, and here comes the threaded barrel version later. I've always criticized them for that. Come out with a TB version first. Guys like tactical stuff, they like running cans, give them the option, or just to introduce them concurrently. Different colorations may be forthcoming, that would be cool. There are some trigger mods coming for the Ruger American. Uh, I, it, maybe it has a Colt following, I don't know. I could be totally wrong. Uh, value, I would say is high. If you like it, if you like a big blocky pistol that is 31 ounces and it's purportedly, I don't know, polymer. In this case, nylon filled gla um, not, uh, glass filled nylon. Oh, is it worth it? Mm, well, I think you know the answer to that. <laughs> it's for me, I, I wouldn't buy it. I mean, I, I'd go, I'd go buy Canic TP9 SA all day long over the Ruger American. Hey, it's not made in America. Well, neither is SIG, neither is Glock, neither is H&K. So that's really not even on the table, is it? Uh, the, I mean, the TP9SA is amazing. It has more rounds, great trigger, comes in colors. It's says licensed copy of the Walther P99. Glock. I've been showing you that all along. It's a third gen, but eh, pretend it's a fourth gen, which is totally squared away. And they do come in different colors as well, and it's... It's about, I mean, it's about $100 more if you buy new, but go get a used Glock. They never wear out. You know, go buy a, Glock, a used Glock. They're everywhere for the same price as that. You, know, you want to talk about accessories. You got everything for that. Trigger mods, sights, extended you know, uh, slide release levers. The list goes on and on. Magazines, grip enhancements. That's because Glock is a runaway bestseller. And by the way, it's in a ton of movies, like I said. Uh, one of the stable mates I probably would prefer over the Ruger is the SR9. The SR9 I don't think is an ugly pistol. I think it's a pretty good looking pistol. Notwithstanding the stupid loaded chamber indicator. What's still there? Yes, this is a hot pistol coming out of a system. But it's cool. Hey, it has a safety, so ignore it. It's small. Um, I like the SR9 still. I don't think the trigger's great on it. I think it absolutely is atrocious actually the SR9 trigger but this isn't a gun whose weight got out of control this is a gun whose weight comes pretty close to Glock I said that in my review of the SR9 which by the way had reliability problems it would not go into battery we had to send it back to the manufacturer something I rarely do now sights are good on the SR9 price levels excellent SR9 is still a good gun so you can see it's not that I I love Ruger I mean they do a lot of good work but I'm not gonna like give them a pass can't get a pass. SR9, dude. How about this? Get a Mark 25. <laughs> it's the same weight. Okay, a little bit heavier. Not much, though. So. Mark 25, dude. I'm just kidding. This is expensive. This is a thousand dollar pistol. So that's kind of a whole different ball game. Yeah, there's some other ones I don't have at the table. I've shown you lots. Walther P PQ. I've said that. Just reviewed the CZ P09. By the way, it's the same price. What? That's right. Well, pretty close. The CZP09 with the, the one version I had had like a 21 round magazine. And it was about the same weight, 32 ounces. I want to make sure, by the way, I'm telling you right. I want to put the scale on right now. It's going to be a pre fight weigh in on camera. I think it's 31 ounces. Well, there you go, dude. There you go. 30.6 with a magazine. That's 31 in my book. Uh, Smith and Wesson M&P9. That'd be another one. 
the MMP45 if you want to go 45. It does have a lifetime warranty that does represent a pretty good value, the Ruger American pistol. But I've already told you what the deal killer is for me personally. It just, uh, the competition I think is really strong. It's super, super competent as you can see. And I, I'm just having a few of the offerings that are in the market right now. I just don't think it's strong enough. I really don't. I think uh, it's really funny to me how when a new gun comes out and everyone's like, oh man, check this out. None finished, you gotta review. And it was, this gun was the same way. You gotta review the Ruger American. Um, okay, here you go, I'm reviewing it. I honestly think a lot of people re want me to review it because they love, love these negative reviews because they go, oh my gosh, someone who's talking straight. Whereas a lot of other media outlets are just taking the talking points given to them by the manufacturer and they spew them. And you don't hear, you hear softball opinions, oh, this is great it's because they have a relationship, they're trying to preserve it, maybe they're getting free guns or something, money, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know, but you know, not me. Uh, I said in another review, you know, when the game's on the line, the great ones always want the football. If you're a gun manufacturer, you should be running to get a TMP review because if it's awesome, I will tell the world that it's awesome. No ifs, ands, or buts. But if it's ugly, uniquely ugly, uniquely bulky and heavy, I'll tell the world that too. Done.